In this video, we're going to look at the graphs of our exponential functions. I right, so remember a graph is just a representation of the inputs and outputs of a function. I can plug in an x value, and then my function tells me what y value I have to put. All right, so whenever I'm graphing something for the first time, I can always just make a chart of some inputs and outputs. So we have our x values and our y values. All right, some values that make sense to plug in are like 0, 1, 2, 3. And maybe some negative ones like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. All right, so what happens if I put in 0? I'm just putting it in for x, so that gives me 2 to the 0 is 1. So I put in 0, I get out 1. So 0, 1 right there is on my graph. All right, next I put in 1, I get 2 to the first. That's just 2. So the point 1, 2 is on my graph. Next, 2 squared, 2 copies of 2 is 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 is on my graph. Last positive one, 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. So I can kind of see what's happening. The next one I'd get 16, it'd be like up here. All right. So you can kind of see on the right-hand side this like really sharp kind of incline going this way. What happens is I go to the left, 2 to the negative 1. That's just a negative exponent. That's 1 over 2, which is a half. Um, so that's going to be negative 1, a half. All right, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 to the positive 2, which is 1 fourth. All right, so it's right about there. Make it a little bigger. There we go. And 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. That's even smaller, 1 eighth. Let's just say it's about there. And you can imagine, next I get 1 16th smaller, 1 32nd, 1 64th. All right, they're getting really small over here. So Exponential functions have this weird, really weird thing where on one side, they get really small. So as I go to the left, these get really small. And I can never draw these right. Let's see, try to do it again. And it goes down. And it kind of just stays here. It doesn't go up and down, like my hand is jiggling. And it also doesn't go down like that. It kind of just really slowly becomes this solid black line. It's kind of hard to draw on my tablet. All right, but that is what's happening on the left. On the right-hand side, you can see these numbers are just getting really big really quickly. We said 16 would be the next one up here. So these just go shoop, like that. All right, so if I tried doing like one smooth motion, it would be basically level and then turn and go straight up. So it would look like that. All right, so this is 2 to the x. So if you know how to plug in values into your exponentials, you can see this general shape. All right, so one important thing with exponentials is a thing called a horizontal asymptote. So if you notice on the left side of the graph, it's basically flat for a while, and then it has that turn up. All right, this flat part is called a horizontal asymptote. All right, these become really important in um, more advanced math. Um, for right now, I just want you to know it's called a horizontal asymptote, and it's going to be really important for when we're graphing exponentials because we need to know where does that leveling off part happen. So we're going to start putting these asymptotes on our graph. And all it means is that your graph space is becoming flat. I just graph 3 to the x. All right, I'm just going to do it quickly without making the chart. 3 to the x, if I put in 0, I get 1. If I put in 1, I get 3. Put in 2, I get 9. If I put in 3, I get 27, which is like up there. All right, so going to the right, again, I get these huge numbers. Going to the left, I'd get 1 third, 1 ninth, and so on. All right, so like I said, we're going to add our horizontal asymptotes. These are not a part of the graph, but they're really important information. So the way we put these on a graph is instead of drawing a solid line, we draw a dotted line. So at my horizontal asymptote, I'm just going to draw this dotted line along here. All right, in my solutions, it's a lot easier for me to just do a solid line. So a lot of times you'll see a red solid line. But when you're doing it by hand, I right, just drawing a dotted line to represent this is my horizontal asymptote. It lets the reader know that to this side, I'm like leveling off on that dotted line. Oops, leveling off. On the dotted line, it's not exactly a flat line, but again, that's just the easiest way for me to draw it on my tablet. And then once I hit zero, I shoot up like that. All right, so that's three to the x. Right. What about one third to the x? All right, well, one third to a positive value is one third. One third squared is one ninth. So now when I'm plugging in these positive numbers, I'm getting out these small numbers. So the horizontal axis is actually going to be the same, but now it's going to the right is when I kind of flatten off. And if I plug in a negative value oops, into one third, a negative exponent flips a fraction. 
and I get three. So now if I plug in negative one, I get three, not one. If I plug in negative two, I get positive three squared, which is nine. So that's there. And you can see it's kind of the opposite of three to the x. So on one side I get small, on the other side I'm gonna get real big. And this kind of shows you the two different possibilities I have. So every exponential function is gonna look like one of these. It's gonna start off really small on the left at our horizontal asymptote, and it kind of levels off. And then it's gonna shoot up really big after that. All right, so all these ones look like that. Or it could be the flip. It could start off really slow on the right, and then shoot up as you go to the left. Generally, we think about functions going left to right. So this one starts high and kind of shoop, goes down. All right, so here's all the important stuff for our general exponentials, uh, b raised to the x. Right, the graph is always going to go through the point 0, 1, because when I put in 0 for the exponent, I get 1. So that's kind of our nice starting point. If b, the base, is bigger than 1, it's going to look like 3 to the x. It's going to start slow and then shoot up after that. If the base is smaller than 1, like 1 third, that's 0.3, smaller than 1, it's going to be the exact opposite. It's going to start high and then come down and then level off. And then you should, to get full credit, you put your horizontal asymptotes on your graph as a dotted line. So here I'd have a dotted line there, here I'd have a dotted line there. And that shows me that you recognize that the graph is actually supposed to level off there and you don't have something that where it looks like that. Because that's wrong for exponentials, it should level off at that dotted line. All right, so here's one for you to try on your own, graph four raised to the x. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, show the answer in three, two, one. All right, four is bigger than one, so it's gonna get bigger to the right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 16, looks like it's just off of here. All right, and again, I'm gonna put my horizontal asymptote where it levels off at zero. All right, when you're doing this in pencil, sometimes you can't see your dotted lines because it's black on top of black. So sometimes you can just extend the dotted lines a little to the left and right so you can see them still. All right, but we know our graph is going to kind of be level. It's a lot easier to do with the pencil. It's kind of level to the left. And then as it gets closer to here, it starts turning. And then it's going to shoot up really quickly like that. Of course, it doesn't have all these wobbles in it, but it's hard to draw on the tablet. All right. Here's another one you can graph on your own, one half to the x. All right, so pause the video, try that on your own. All right, one half is a number that's smaller than one, so it's gonna get bigger to the left and small to the right. All right, so it levels off over here, and then it gets big to the left. All right, so here's a quick summary of the um, exponential graphs. One, they have that horizontal aspect. It's really important you add the horizontal aspect because it's really important information that it's leveling off there. And then you have two different shapes depending on B. All right, you can have a big B or a small B. All right, that's the general shape. That's really all you need to know for right now.